Mm -hmm. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, today's question comes from Ben Sirach. Uh, he asks, uh, can you make a video on the position of a reader? Because I'm a tonsured reader in the Serbian Orthodox Church. Um, I thought about making uh, a video, uh, a pencils and prayer ropes video on the position of a reader, but I'm afraid I don't have just um, that I don't have enough material, you know, to make it um, too interesting or too engaging because it's mostly, you know, like duties, facts, um, you know. So, uh, a reader. Um, what's a reader? Well, in the Orthodox Church, a uh, reader is one of the, is the lowest uh, ranks of clergy. The prayer of becoming uh, a reader uh, contains uh, uh, contains a sentence that essentially says, uh, "Now you have become a reader, um, and it is uh, for you to strive to reach uh, the higher ranks of priesthood." Something that I'm not doing, uh, but oh well. Um, so, what does a reader do actually? A uh, reader reads the scripture during the services, but not all of scripture. Um, the reader never reads the Gospels. That is solely the prerogative of uh, a priest or uh, a deacon. Um, a deacon will read the Gospel if present during the Divine Liturgy. If not present, it will be read by a priest. Um, I don't think I have actually seen a bishop read the gospel uh, there are probably cases of it you know but um, for that to happen you have to have a, a, a bishop serving the liturgy without a deacon which is next to unthinkable I, but I suppose it can happen um, so uh, the reader reads uh, other books of the Bible that's primarily what we call an apostle which is uh, the epistles of uh, uh, Saint Paul, Saint Paul mostly, but uh, uh, also other uh, Catholic epistles like those of Jude, uh, Saint John the Theologian, Saint Peter, and so on. Um, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, we never read uh, the Apocalypse because uh, it is one of the books that's never read in church, because people get ideas when they he hear it, you know, read. So better to prevent any kind of, you know, pr uh, problem. Um, we also read the readings from the Old Testament on the eaves of great feast days. Um, this also depends, you know, on the particular feast. Uh, it is usually... Um, it is us those, uh, those Old Testament readings are usually uh, uh, like uh, types or prophecies that deal with a uh, that deal with the Christian feast. Uh, for example, on Pascha, that is on the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, we read uh, the, uh, the entire book of Jonah because it prefigures the resurrection of Christ, or we read the Ezekiel's vision of dry bones, and so on. Uh, so, uh, some historical background. Um, as you are probably uh, aware, uh, people uh, didn't, weren't as literate as they were today, and books were very expensive and difficult to come by. Uh, so, uh, the rank of the reader was established uh, in order... Uh, in order for... Um, so that people could uh, hear the scriptures read. This was primarily done in the context uh, of uh, service. Uh, I'm not exactly uh, sure if readers actually read the scriptures outside of the services, you know, to interested parties. It may have been so. Uh, but the, uh, the purpose of the reader was not only to read, but also to protect uh, church books. And there were some um, martyr readers uh, who suffered on the account of not wanting to reveal to persecuting authorities the location of Christian service books and uh, Bibles, essentially. Um, over time, of course, their 
role changed a bit, especially today, because, again, people are mostly literate, uh, and um, uh, people are mostly literate, uh, and books aren't that difficult to come by, but still, uh, uh, they have kept their liturgical function. Um, a reader will usually have, you know, uh, a reading or two, rarely three, uh, during uh, a typical divine liturgy. Um, there may be ma uh, there may be additional readings uh, on other services, um, like uh, the vigils, more specifically. Um, let me just see if I finished everything on this one. Yes, I did. Um, <coughs> What else? Uh, uh, yes, these uh, Old Testament reading, readings, um, there can be even up to 15 of them uh, on, the, uh, on the eve of Pascha, for example. This is just, you know, an extreme example. Um, I once did uh, all 15 readings in one go. Uh, <laughs> when the service ended, we realized that we should have been alternating, you know, um, someone else would do every other reading, but I decided to do them all in one go. And man, um, I don't know if you guys ever read like 200 or 300 pages, but it was a similar feeling, like you get really dizzy, uh, you sort of feel depersonalized, like <laughs> you're watching a movie of what you're experiencing from your body, but you just don't have much relation to it, you know, so it's it's pretty weird. I don't suggest it. It sounds cool. It's not. Um, so uh, as for other things, um, the typical um, uh, a typical reader will wear a white robe uh, called uh, stiharion uh, during the services. Uh, and when I make uh, pencils and prayer robes, you'll all often see me, uh, you know, wearing uh, that robe. So, um, a lot of people think that I'm a priest. I'm not a priest, I'm a reader. Um, priests have uh, more, you know, complex vestments. Um, the color of this, uh, of this Stiharion, like all other vestments, may depend uh, on the feast day, because, you know, uh, those vestments get changed uh, depending on the liturgical color. But uh, also... Um, uh, primary, uh, primary, uh, de determining factor there is their, uh, availability. In the chapel that I attend, we, uh, we have new, new, uh, newer Viter Stiharions, the one that I u usually draw myself in, and this, uh, purple brocade Stiharion that's practically falling apart, and um, which I wear only when uh, some uh, someone else wants to help out in the altar, so I ha I let them have the new one and they wear that ghastly old thing. But they like it also because you know it's tradition. So, uh, some holy man probably wore it at one point, so why not wear it again? Um, in most countries that aren't Serbia, uh, readers will wear. Uh, a black cassock outside of services, uh, but not all the time, usually when they're going to church. In Serbia, readers uh, don't don't wear that. Uh, uh, there was some, you know, attempts to establish it, but I don't think it has caught on, especially because the readers are essentially rare. Um, in the sense of, you will always have some person who will read during the liturgy, but that person does not have to be a tosher the reader. Uh, you have to be a priest to serve the liturgy, to perform the sacraments. You have to be a deacon to read the gospel. But anyone can uh, anyone can read the apostles. Uh, of course, preference is given to tosher readers. But for example, if somebody attends the liturgy and that person has, uh, you know, a, simply a better voice, intonation, whatever, I will give them to read the apostle. You know, because. Uh, it is something that they can do. So, how did I become a reader? Uh, it wasn't really uh, anything special. Uh, I was at, uh, uh, attending this chapel, and at that time, uh, uh, Patriarch Paul of Serbia has reposed in the Lord, and he was a, a very saintly man. 
and uh, until the new patriarch was uh, elected, um, he was um, uh, the duties of the patriarch were performed by another saintly bishop, Saint Amphilochius of um, of Montenegro. And what's specific about um, Bishop Amphilochius? Uh, he's a metropolitan now. Uh, is that um, or an archbishop? I can't remember. Is that um, he likes to ordain people, you know. Uh, there's usually a joke of um, how does uh, uh, how does the um, how does Bish, uh, Archbishop Amphilochius uh, bless uh, bless the seminarians? Your Eminence, bless servant of God, boy, and is being ordained to holy priesthood and so on. Anyway, um, well, uh, during his tenure, uh, one of the priests in the chapel asked me, "Boy, and do you want to become?" A tonsured reader. And I said, I don't know what a tonsured reader, but yeah, so I did. Um, uh, readers don't become, aren't ordained, they become tonsured. Uh, it is essentially, uh, it is essentially an ordination service, but uh, it is done outside of the altar. And during the uh, uh, during the service, uh, you bow three times, uh, three times to the icon of Christ, three times uh, to the icon of Theotokos, uh, you bow three times before the bishop, you know, because you become, uh, you swear your allegiance to him. Uh, then you're vested in a short felonian. Again, felonian is a uh, is a uh, priestly vestment that is like, uh, uh, sort of like, uh, uh, what's it called? I can't remember the clothes name, but it, it is essentially like a blanket that you wear over yourself. Uh, but uh, readers wear this one only for their tonsure. They don't wear it otherwise. And once they wear it, and in this case, I didn't have a prop we didn't have proper vestments, so we simply wore stick stikharians rolled up like some scars around our shoulders. And we were, uh, and um, each reader is given a random part from the scripture to read. Uh, this is clearly established, you know, to check if the priest, uh, if the reader is illiterate, you know, so the, that he can't cram, you know, some random part of the scripture that he knows uh, or uh, that he can expect to be read for any given Sunday. Um, uh, my part was, uh, I didn't look it up, but um, I, uh, I can uh, give you a, a short rundown and you can find it later on. Uh, for we needed uh, uh, a high priest uh, such as um, such as this, uh, pure, meek, compassionate, uh, higher um, uh, higher than heavens. Uh, that was my portion. The, I'll probably put the whole one in the pin comments if I don't re uh, forget, and they will. Um, I did well, and I become a reader. Uh, uh, and in fact, in fact. Uh, because uh, the point of the reader is for him to uh, uh, to keep the service books, you know, in presentable state. Uh, but also, I have read somewhere that it is also his duty to inspire people to read the scripture. And guess how I attempted and am attempting to do that with Bible Illustrated. Um, this entire project essentially came into being... Uh, with me trying to, uh, you know, mot motivate people to um, to read the Bible. And it has blown so bad back into my face, because guess which book I barely read these days? It's the Bible. Uh, so, uh, so it's, you know, <laughs> my spiritual father uh, once, uh, you know, joked, he said, oh, you don't read the Bible at all, you just draw the verses. Um, yeah, because, well, I don't want to say that I don't have enough time. I could find time, but you know how things are with, uh, um, it's always more interesting to watch YouTube or something. And th this is just me confessing my sin to a wider Christian audience. Um, uh, because I don't want to be condemned by Christ as a hypocrite, so I'll just be condemned as a non-Bible reader and be thrown into hell for that. <laughs> Please God no. So, um, I think that I have covered everything. Uh, readers usually end their letters with 
you know, read her name. And to anyone who has written to me, I, I, I will usually sign it with yours in Christ, Reader Boyan. We don't give blessings, we don't read prayers or stuff and so on. Um, those are developments, the historical development. There are saints who were readers, but I, ca uh, I can't remember any at this moment. They usually have these arcane Roman names, so uh, it's kind of difficult for me to remember them. Um, and that's it. Bye!